talk about um, what um, you know, men, and it could be both sex, I guess. What what of uh, the four mm -hmm. characteristics are uh, attracted to each other, Ooh. and then and then what manifests from that? Absolutely. So with secure attachment, you know that you can go to other human beings. And by by large, most people will cooperate with you, right? Most people, I go to you and say, hey, you know what? I'm having this problem. Can you help me out? You're going to say, yeah, okay, I'll help you. And you'll, you'll teach me something about it, right? You're not going to scream at me. You're not going to throw a rock at me for asking you for <laughs> advice. Um, that's secure attachment. They will always default during conflict to trying to cooperate with the other person as much as they humanly can. They will sort themselves out typically from everybody else because they will cluster together because they'll test that with other people. And when it doesn't go well, they say, oh, okay. And they just back off because they know there's tons of other people out there that they can go to, to get that connection with. So the world is sorted into two different movies playing on the same screen. Mm. There's the secure people over here that you talk to that say, Hey, life is pretty easy. Life is pretty great. Yeah. There's challenges, but I just take care of business and my friends and family love me and everything's wonderful. And they're over here. And most people think that the insecure styles all think those people are delusional. Like, <laughs> like, how did you like, are you on drugs? How are you doing that? Like you were just born lucky. Yeah, you must have it easy. Right. Everybody else <laughs> over here in the insecure camp of no one will ever help me, ever. Either because of myself, because I don't deserve it, or because they are untrustworthy. Either way, I, I have to play games to make people like me. So the anxiously attached people, they have, all, I could talk all kinds of brain chemicals and stuff, but this is different with them. But they have an overwhelming craving to be loved, to be taken care of, to not be abandoned. So they are endlessly chasing not abandonment, not even to be kept, to not be abandoned. So everything they do is to try to go out and have people love them. So they become codependent. They take care of other people who have problems. They find some drugged up crazy dude that they can just like take care of forever because he will never leave her because she's never going to run out of problems she can solve for him. And eventually he will really depend on her. So she will obviously, he'll marry her and have babies with her and he'll take care of her and he'll stop using drugs and all the things he's doing eventually because he'll love her enough. No, he will usually have avoidant attachment style of I can't trust anybody else. So I got to push their buttons. I got to make them do what I want. So he thinks everything that's good happening in the relationship is only because he's constantly pushing good buttons to give her a dribble of good feelings. And everything she does is not because she loves him. It's only because he's providing her with good feelings. So he just sits back and says, I'm not, we're not solving problems together. I solve problems by making you happy. So he never properly bonds to her or to anybody else. He just withdraws. He, he has to give her good feelings. Then she frantically chases them, becomes addicted to that, valid, that, that complete validation. It's called oxytocin is the bonding hormone that he's flooding in her. He does something called love bombing, overwhelms her with that sensation. He doesn't mean to, but but he's making her feel amazing. And then she tries to rush at him and get too close. And then you avoid it. And he backs off. He says, whoa, I didn't think we were having that kind of a relationship. Yeah, we have five kids. And yeah, we've been together for 30 years. But I don't really think I want to talk about my feelings with you. That's, that's a little too deep. That's too deep. Oh, but you want to get married now? Mm, no, you know, well, you and your five kids over there, you guys could stay there. I, marriage is, too, is a, a step too far because I would be vulnerable. You could hurt me through marriage. We'll do everything else, but not sign that piece of paper. That's what it is. But she chases, the anxious person chases, the avoidant person avoids and dodges back endlessly over and over and over. And you see this dynamic play out constantly with couples who they chase, they run away. There's always a chaser and a runner during those situations.